if you're here to find the fastest settings for Gran Turismo force feedback, then you're in the right place. They are on, they're not on screen right now, guys, because this is going to be what I'm going to use to test because I don't think there's such thing as the fastest settings period. They are very specific, driver specific, hardware specific, wheel specific, even rig specific in my GT Omega classic cockpit. Uh, since changing to this, I can use slightly different force feedback settings. What I'm going to do right now, though, guys, I'm going to go through the force feedback settings and explain what each one does so that you can tune it to be perfect for yourself. There are two force feedback settings which have a significant effect on the way the car drives, the feedback that's given to you through the wheel, and that is max torque and feedback sensitivity. There is a potential third one which is yet to be confirmed, but we'll get to that a little bit later in the video. For now, I'm going to do my testing with force feedback set to max torque 10. This will amplify the feeling uh, that we're going to test for sensitivity. This first test is going to be in a Ferrari road car around Sardinia, and we're going to start with force feedback sensitivity on 10. I'm going to run a few laps. I'm going to give you some feedback as to how the car feels. Sensitivity set to maximum now, number 10. I'm going to drive this car and instantly I can feel the centering feeling in the steering is very, very high. The steering feels very tight around neutral. There's a real, uh, real force that is there to, to centralize the steering wheel. Holding the steering wheel lightly, there's a bit of oscillation there on the straight. I need to break very early in this car as we are lacking downforce, that is for sure. Now this car is very loose to drive and I think with the high sensitivity it, there's a lot of self-aligning going on with the wheel which I think works really well in a car that is very loose, very slidey. We can really get the feeling from the steering wheel as to how much opposite lock needs to be applied as we start to lose traction on corner exit. The car is actually very playful and it's got really good feedback actually. I'm, I'm really liking the highest sensitivities. Since switching to the GT Omega rig, um, just the stiffness in the cockpit has been superb. It allows you to run higher torque. If you want anything from GT Omega, then check out the links in the description below. We've got links for exclusive 5% off discount codes. Make sure you go and check those out. Fantastic GT Omega products. Um, I absolutely love it guys, it, it just means you can run a higher force feedback and you get more feedback from the car directly to your hands rather than flexing your rig or your desk. So yeah, with, with feedback sensitivity set to 10, the car feels very tight, the wheel is very tight to move. Let's now uh, switch it up to uh, sensitivity minimum so right down on force feedback sensitivity i will do a retry just so we've got no tire temperatures involved and immediately i can feel there is a the wheel is much lighter around center there's, there's less of a, of a kind of a, a tight point it seems to almost blend into stiffness whereas with uh, maximum sensitivity is very tight around center this just feels a bit more floaty and we'll even get it stopped so when the car slides it's not the feedback through the wheel isn't quite as direct and and actually you know what it feels like it's vague uh, there's a bit of vagueness for where you need to be correcting the car. It feels smooth. If, if you're driving ahead of the car, perhaps this will be quite good. But if you're relying on the car feeding back to you, then I think the lower sensitivity just feels a bit vague. It's probably a bit kinder on the desk that you may be clamped to. Uh, right now this is on GT Omega uh, classic wheel stands, so 
I'm, I'm pretty stiff, there's, there's no real problems here. And yeah, it just feels to me like this lower sensitivity feels a bit vague. In the road car, we're gonna get to a, a GT3 car in a minute and see how that feels. Um, but yeah, there's just almost like a smoothness to the feeling from the force feedback. Again, this may be something you, you actually want, so this could be a tunable scale. You maybe would not use all the way 10 or all the way one, um, but for me, it makes the car just feel a bit vague. So I'm gonna pause right there, go back to the controller settings. So for force feedback sensitivity, I feel like this is a representation of the game uh, displaying caster to you in a race car caster is the uh, kingpin angled backwards uh, which gives you some self aligning uh, to, to the steering wheel uh, the more caster you have the more self alignment there is and the, the harder you have to work at the steering wheel uh, so on a low sensitivity if it makes the car feel a bit more vague uh, a bit smoother whereas on a higher force feedback sensitivity it feels quite tight it feels very aggressive and there's a very narrow window of, of where the wheels want to be pointed when the car's sliding you know exactly where you need to be pointing those wheels uh, so that's an interesting one to me um, my preference has been more towards the higher end um, i get real good uh, feedback from the road cars even the gt3 cars um, now this one here force feedback maximum torque this is a straight scale of the torque so 10 is more one is less it's quite simple and this is probably more specific to the wheel that you have so if you have a high torque wheel uh, you may not need to bump this up quite so much i've got a logitech g29 um, and me playing on 10 just then it didn't feel too bad but the logitech g29 isn't able to produce the amount of torque that some of the direct drive wheels would be so this one is definitely driver preference um, I've been running on four for quite a long time um, and I've been starting to move it higher and higher since switching to the GT Omega uh, classic wheel stand. What we're going to do now is going to repeat the test but with a GT3 car. Uh, it's actually going to be at the current time trial uh, around Fuji. It's a very interesting track, a lot of twists and turns. We're going to rent a car and we're going to rent a, a Ferrari, I think. Uh, this car is quite loose, especially off throttle. Uh, on corner entry so we should be able to feel how the car uh, reacts off throttle and how the force feedback is fed back to us um, before we begin i'm just going to put the no not the car settings the controller settings i'm going to put it back to the uh, maximum uh, torque so again this is just so we can feel the difference between force feedback sensitivity i'm going to start again once again force feedback sensitivity starting on 10 and we're going to run uh, a few laps now So again, the, the car feels very, very tight. In fact, it feels much more tighter than the road car does. And the wheel oscillation in a straight line can be quite aggressive if you don't hang onto the wheel. Now you can use your own hands and arms to dampen the oscillation. You can't actually feel it when you're holding. Um, but if you were to just flick it and just watch it, you can get the oscillation going. So it's not a problem unless you provoke it on the brakes you can feel a little bit of car pulling just barely getting the apex there a nice alignment feeling there as the car was sliding on corner exit there we've got a strong feedback to let me know to correct that slide a bit wide there just about staying in track limits now to me this feels a bit too stiff on the wheel but I'm just doing it for evaluation guys too early on the brakes there quite strong feedback over the curves at this track big braking zone here a lot of curves to bounce over in this section I'm not really getting much feedback on any of the curves I think that's a Gran Turismo thing for me, the feedback is more just to do with the alignment of the tyres rather than feedback. A bit of swaz there, but we could catch that quite easily because it just gave you good feedback as to what direction the, the front tyres need to be. Again, 
Uh, great feedback from the car. It's really telling us what direction those front tyres need to be pointing. Not a particularly fast way to do it, but in a GT3 car, coming out the corners, having to slide and correct it, that's really difficult to do. And with the high force feedback sensitivity, that worked really quite well. Now the lap time's not particularly good. I'm about a second off where I could be. Uh, let's now just switch that up to the opposite. So right down to force feedback sensitivity uh, one. We're going to hit retry, just make sure the tyres are in exactly the same condition as the one where before, no overheating or anything like that. Now and immediately the car feels much more, again, a bit of vagueness, a bit of lack of self-centering from the wheel. Much more floaty around the middle. And I, I really do think it is a, an attempt at the caster or alignment feeling that setting from a real life race car. Yeah, there's just less resistance around the middle. It's definitely noticeable. On the brakes now, into turn one again. A bit vague on what's being fed back to me. Bit of a slide, managed to catch that, but again, there's not that pinpoint accuracy that the higher sensitivity gives you. You perhaps can have more control over how you turn in because you're driving the car rather than the car driving you. Having the force react too high definitely can be a problem where the, you're just letting the car drive you. Especially if you're clamped onto a desk or you're clamped onto something that's not secure Sometimes I used to feel back in the day I clamped onto a desk where the wheel was, was basically causing me problems. I was scared to be aggressive with the wheel because of the force feedback. Not clamped to a solid rig like I've got right now. Now I don't think any one setting is particularly faster than the other. I think it comes down to driver preference. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not getting as much through the wheel, through this series of corners I can't feel where I'm on the edge I can't feel where this, this slide's going to come from yeah I just that really highlights it there. there there was a vagueness to that slide I didn't know how much opposite lock to be using whereas on the higher sensitivity I almost knew straight away snapping to this certain angle uh, would get me to it now the lap times are relevant because because of that slide um, but yeah, let's just talk you through that one more time. Similar feeling to the road car, uh, right down to the bottom. Force feedback sensitivity for me is about the tightness of the steering wheel. In my previous video, almost a year ago now, I recommended quite a low setting. And I think that's probably because I was clamped onto a desk. Using a, a, a solid rig like a classic wheel stand from GT Omega allows you to use higher force feedback settings and allows the car to feed back to you what the car is actually doing. So my recommendation is to go and test it out. See if you correlate with my feelings. I personally will be using force feedback sensitivity 10. Force feedback max torque, I feel like that was too much torque. So for me, I think I'm going to be playing with numbers in the 567 region. Uh, up until this point during this uh, all this testing, I've been at four for a long time. I think I'm gonna pump it up to maybe six maybe. So these are gonna be the settings that I'm gonna use going forwards. There is another setting that has been mentioned in a few other videos, and I've tried my hardest to figure out exactly what it does. And this is controller steering sensitivity. Uh, the recommendation in these videos is five. I've I've tried it all different ways. I, I cannot feel the difference between any of these. I believe this is uh, controller sensitivity specifically for the stick on the thumbstick when you're using. I can feel a difference when you're using a, a controller on the thumbstick. But when you're using a wheel, I, I really cannot f figure out the difference uh, between any of these uh, sensitivities. I, I've, I've tried my hardest. Um, it, it doesn't correlate to wheel angle versus turning angle. Uh, it doesn't correlate to uh, turn in or, or speed in which you can turn the wheel. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you know exactly what this does, because I, I really cannot find a difference. If someone was to change the setting for me and I weren't, I weren't told about that, I would not tell you that anything's changed. Any other 
uh, force feedback sensitive setting, if something changed, I would feel it straight away. When I changed the LSD in the settings, I would feel that straight away. But if somebody went and changed my settings without me knowing from minus two to 10, I guarantee you, I, I wouldn't tell. I'd, I'd set the same lap times. I'd get the same feeling from the car. Yeah, I just would not be able to tell. So let me know guys what you think in the comments below. And that's gonna wrap up force feedback settings in Gran Turismo 7. I think the best way to do this is for you to go and try it yourself. I've taught you exactly how, what I, how I feel with the way these settings are. Uh, finding the right settings for you is the most important thing. For me, with my Logitech G29, on my brand new GT Omega uh, classic wheel stand rear frame RS6 seat, uh, I can use now use higher force feedback sensitivity settings and just general higher force feedback torque settings. Uh, the, the rigidity in the cockpit allows me to do that. It gives me the feedback that I need from the car, and this has really gone a long way to help me uh, get faster in Gran Turismo 7. If you do want GT Omega rig stuff, then make sure you go and check out links in the description below. I've got an exclusive discount code CD5, uh, or just use any of the links in the description below because they'll take you straight to GT Omega where you can get some absolutely amazing stuff. This RS6 seat, the rear frame, the classic wheel stand, this is all low cost stuff from GT Omega. And I think it's right up there, super high value, uh, and it feels really, really good to use. Guys, if you want other things uh, to help you get past in Gran Turismo 7, there'll be links on screen right now. Uh, go and check those out. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.